Hi, I'm Tamara Zoner. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. Come in, sit down, and grab a cup of love. Hello and welcome back to Spirit Cafe. I am your humble host, Tamara Zoner, and I am super excited today to introduce, as I usually do, someone I barely know anything about, but just enough to pique my interest. And so I'm going to introduce to you briefly Dana Sardano, who is an author, artist, educator, and intuitive. Oh my, she says in her byline, I love that. <laughs> Okay, let's just get right to it. Dana, welcome to Spirit Cafe. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Oh, boy. Hi, how are you? You good? <laughs> I'm good. Good, good. You know, there's so much because I'm I'm at this point in my in my path and I'm doing all these different things. But I'm going to share with you what I just realized about myself over like the last week or so, like what my projects are. And then we could delve into where they come from, if you'd like. Sure. Um, I, I'm owner of Ubuntu Fish Gallery in Stewart, Florida. It's an art gallery and intuitive lounge, which is really cool because it merges the concept of uh, creative expression and intuition and how when they work together, they grow in tandem. And there, it's not just about creativity. It's about, um, you know, I do intuitive guidance sessions and I do uh, uh, private groups and things like that. So that's that's one. I'm an author. I've authored uh, a few books and they're all based in self-empowerment and spirituality and the individuality of those paths. Love it. Um, the third, I'm like doing it in my head because I was like, there were five buckets. The third bucket is the communications. Um, I am just creating my own, I wouldn't call it a podcast, but a little show that I do with my business partner that we call Cuddle Talk that require our guests to show up in pajamas. Oh, I love and it. And not be at their desk, you know, like I'll, I film it from either this futon or a futon at the gallery in my home right now. And just to talk about stories that uplift and inspire and, and what has inspired us to let go of the fear and step into our greatness. So that's a really cool one. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is I've partnered up with my business partner, old college buddy with finduniquelyyou.com to help people find their spark, find their joy and their light. And there are so many components. We don't have enough time, but there's that. And the fifth one, the newest one is one of my books I, I published, um, self-published. The other one I published with an author who I just wasn't getting where I, not an author, a publisher who I wasn't getting where I wanted to get with it. And the third one, we, I, we, okay, pulled the second one, pulled the self-published one, created our own publishing company, oh, Phenom wow. Publishing, and published now all three of them on Phenom. And that is, and that's for authors who, again, have stepped into their greatness, who have something to say and want to bring it to the world. So I got a lot going on. And it's, really, really cool. <laughs> and it's all based on, and, and it's all based on one night in 2015 saying to my husband, Hey, let's do something different tonight. We got a babysitter. Let's not go to Costco. Let's paint something. Oh, how fabulous. In 2015. And, and here we are, you and I sitting today talking about my five buckets. Yeah, that's a lot of buckets, but they all seem to float in the same kind of pool. So yeah, a hundred percent. Totally. Totally. Good. Good point. Yeah. Because, and as a creative, you know, it's hard to do just one thing. <laughs> Right. Artist spaces yeah. are often, not always, but often messy because it's like, oh, I'm inspired to do a little of this and I'm inspired to do a little bit of that. And, you know, it took me a, a lot of years and permission from business coaches to to feel OK with doing more than one thing because traditional wisdom is focus on one path. And that's not the way that many brains work. We do better when we do a little of this and do a little of that. So. How how did you get to that evening in 2015? What was, tell us a little bit about your spiritual or religious upbringing and what your beliefs about the world are and where you first started stepping into your creativity and intuition. Oh, wow. So that's a really complex question, but I'm, I'm excited to answer because I get all the answers. Yay. Got it written right here. <laughs> um, I I grew up in a Roman Catholic household. It wasn't, um, it, it, it wasn't oppressive, but 
but it was more traditional. My parents went to Catholic schools, but they didn't send my brother and I to Catholic schools because um, they just, it wasn't for them. But yet the traditions and the dogma and all that did exist. But I was, I always respected religion, but I was never attached to it. Mm -hmm. And then um, ironically, I, I'm a career educator. I, I left education in 2017 in its traditional sense, but um, I taught for 25 years. And of those 25 years, I taught 18 of them in an Orthodox, in two different Orthodox Jewish high schools. One of them I spent 16 years in. Wow. And then when I left my 23 year career doing what I was doing, I then, when I, when I decided I was going to like leave my six figure career and be a, an artist because I like to paint, um, I wound up taking a part-time job the first two years, a couple of days a week, teaching in a Catholic school for kids K to 12, doing a little art, you know, just to kind of keep the lights on. Right? right. So for somebody who's not connected to religion, I worked in religious schools. Oh my God. 20 of 25 years wow. so so that's that as far as the spirituality is concerned I was oh you know and your audience knows I was always connected mm -hmm. but somehow believed these gifts that I had were wrong or bad or vices not vices but uh not my greatest strengths just as an example my Im impulsivity that was always like a thing. Dana's impulsivity and Dana's impulsive and Dana doesn't know when to shut her mouth and all of those things. But what I come to learn on my spiritual path is my impulsivity within balance is one of my greatest gifts. Mm -hmm. I transmuted it into a gift and people don't realize they think gifts are just simply seeing dead people, right? Mm -hmm. Or gifts are just simply reading auras, but really your gifts are the most authentic version of yourself. So, so that I learned through my spiritual journey, but it truly began. I mean, when does it begin? Dark night of the soul, when you make <laughs> that great shift, like all those things. But for me, it began obviously that, that night in 2015, that night, my husband and I, I was tutoring, you know, I worked a billion hours a week. I had two small children. I was tutoring for SAT prep, like college prep and college mm -hmm. uh, entrance exams and stuff like that. Like my job as a, an educator was never as an artist, except after I left my career, it was all about, you know, college prep stuff, all about the thinking mind instead of the heart. And uh, I just had this thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did something different rather than give the kids to a babysitter and go off to Costco? Let's do a painting with a twist class. Fun. And yeah, but my husband was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not hanging out with a bunch of women drinking wine and painting palm trees. So what he did say was, I'll take you to Michael's. I'll buy anything you want and we'll go paint at home. And okay. that night, January, 2015, something awoke in me that had lain dormant for my entire life because I was always creative and I couldn't stop painting. And within two years, I had left my career. And again, obviously, there's so much more to the story. It's in my book, <laughs> book, <laughs> but there's so much more to that story. But that was the impetus. And then it was all about being an artist, being an artist. And then there was this unintentional spiritual journey that I wasn't even aware I was on until I started stumbling across the terminology. Oh, that was Dark Night of the Soul. Oh, that is energy. Oh, that's alignment. Oh, that's what they meant by karma and all this thing. So that's how I wound up here in the most succinct, although not succinct way I could tell you. Right. I love that. I love that you just said you didn't even know you were on it because I'm always saying we're all on our journeys, whether we know it or not, every <laughs> step you take through your life is part of your journey. And so yeah. you, you have some people who are consciously aware of it. Oh, I'm on a spiritual journey. So I'm doing this and I'm, maybe it's painting. Maybe it's seeing a shaman. Maybe it's seeing four shamans. Maybe it's doing, you know, a, a month in the mountains, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you're just going to Costco and smiling at people. Yeah. You're so smart. Yeah. Right, we're all on the journey, whether we know it or not. Yeah. So I love that yeah. you became aware of it by seeing these words and matching them to your experience. How cool! Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I don't know if you've ever watched The Good Place. Yes. Uh, Ted Dan. Okay, so there's a part in the end. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but in like I think the like the last season where they go back to Earth mm -hmm. and they're gonna fix things. I don't remember much of it, but they come back and they say to Ted Danson, who is you know, on the other side, you know, giving them the messages and guiding them. And they're like, 
you know, and that, and again, I'm misquoting. I'm just giving you the uh, paraphrasing, but they're like all excited. They're like, we got your like your 12 messages. Right. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I sent you over 3000. <laughs> right. and, you know, and that's how our, what's what our journey looks like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, oh, I saw repeating numbers and a bird came to my window, but we're not paying attention. They're everywhere all, all of the time. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting chills with you talking about that. It's like they're in the lyrics of the song that happens to be on the radio. They're, you know, they're everywhere, but that's exactly it. I'm actually listening to a book for my, I had, uh, whenever I need to do a lot of mundane tasks, right? Mm -hmm. I'll listen to a fun audio book instead of all the personal development ones. I'm listening to Stephen King's uh, fairy tale. And in it, they were literally this morning, there were, there was a scene where they were talking about how they're talking about mermaids and who how only only the people who listen can hear them they're singing all the time but only the people who listen can hear them (laughs) and and that's that's it right yeah are you are you aware of the signs are you asking for them are you paying attention to when they show up and I think numbers are a great one you mentioned the the numbers because I think people notice those more yeah yeah they're more common yeah yeah. And they're like, oh, what does this mean? You know, I charge uh, for one of my services, I charge $333 <laughs> for a clarity intensive. And the, this woman came to me a couple of weeks ago and we took her through it. And she said, you know, I was like, why does she charge $333? And, and then she looked up the meaning of 333 and was like, that's exactly what I'm experiencing. <laughs> that's exactly what I want. <laughs> oh, my God. And you, you know, know, what's funny is I didn't, I just liked those numbers. Threes are my number. And I said, this is what I'm charging. And then I looked up what it meant. I just knew that that was what I had to charge. So, you know, there's signs everywhere. Everywhere. Can I I share with you like a a funny little story about signs? Yeah. So, so my, you know, we all look different in how we receive the signs and how we express ourselves to the world. And I think a pitfall is that sometimes we, 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 why don't I do what that one does? And why don't I receive it the way that one does? But my magic, I got a couple of magical nuggets that I keep in my pocket, but my, my favorite magic is in my dream interpretation. Not only do I receive dreams for myself, prophetic dreams, but I receive them for other people when necessary. And I have to wake up and I have to decode the whole thing. And I have to figure out who was a, like this morning, I'm, whoop, Miss Goosey. This morning, I'm like, all right, who was that about? And then I put everything together and I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so. And And then I was able to interpret it and call her up and be like, I got a message for you. It's like that. So I have done a lot of work on my physical vessel over the last couple of years. There's I know we don't, that's a whole nother day, a whole nother conversation. But as a part of it, my husband, who is very straight and narrow, he's got magic in his hands. He'll never admit that he's got this magic, but he's been massaging, you know, mu- like um, joints that haven't moved in years because I've carried, you know, old density and old traumas and things like that. And in doing so, I would go to bed and they would release in these dreams and I would have these dreams. Oh. So I'm, yeah, and they would help me understand that I'd meditate in the morning. And I had like this whole process. So, I have been relatively well, relatively healthy. Uh, no, v- very well and very healthy. Who am I kidding? I'm killing it. So anyway, <laughs> so the <laughs> other night, the other night, I'm like, you know, my shoulder's still giving me issues. So he was like, the shoulder that I used to think I was supposed to have surgery on. And he gave it a little of this and I did a little stretching and I felt release in both my shoulders. So in my dream state, I dreamt about my brother and my mother's mother, my grandmother, and didn't have great relationships with either of them. But the whole thing was about how I released that. I released that heaviness, right? So I wake up and in my quasi state in the morning, sometimes you hear a message, but you don't hear it outwardly. It comes from a different part of your brain. You know, it's not your thought, you know, you know, and you, whoever's listening knows. And all of a sudden I hear your darkness in your shoulders is the meat. So I wake up and I'm like, maybe darkness means density. So I go to my 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 reading room, right? My my meditation room, and I'm sitting on it. And I'm like, maybe it's time for me, because I was vegan there for a while. Maybe it's time for me to like release the meat. Maybe that's the density in my maybe. And then all of a sudden I hear it again. And it's the darkness in your shoulders has been released. And I was like, oh, <laughs> 
in so much more sense. And it was about <laughs> releasing my grandmother, releasing my brother. And meanwhile, I'm like, shit, I don't want to go vegan again. You know? Oh, God, you know, I mean, I like my meat, you know, in moderation. <laughs> But it killed me because I had this whole plan how I had to tell my husband we're going to go back to beans all the time. And, you know, yeah. So listen carefully. That's, the <laughs> <message>. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're the first person I told, like, outside, like, my inner, inner circle. But it freaking cracked me up. Thank you. That is, is really so, so funny. <laughs> it's, like, it's like telephone that game when your kids and just one little thing gets changed because either – you're not quite awake yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, that's so, so funny. Yeah. You know, my, my boyfriend kept waking up a couple of weeks ago, like four in the morning, four in the morning. And I was like, honey, you know what they say? This means like, you are you listening? Are you paying attention? Because he does not believe in any of it. He would totally call it all woo-woo. He, oh, uh, yeah. My husband my too. woo-woo, but he's just like, I don't believe any of it. Yeah. And so I'm just like, you You better start listening, dude, because somebody's got a message for you. You keep waking up. Pay attention. Yeah. He's, not, yeah. he's not paying attention. I uh, love that story. That's so funny. Isn't Thank that funny? That. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the, the meat. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So, okay. You've mentioned you're multi authored. I like to make up words. You are multi-authored. Um, so tell us about, tell us about your writing journey, your book writing journey. Did, had you thought of writing a book before you picked up that paintbrush? When I was in college, the, the running joke was I was going to, I'm about to date myself, get ready. I was going to be the next Rosie O'Donnell. So the yeah. talk show, right? That was the one. And the other was, I was going to write a book called the many lives of anonymous by anonymous. One chapter was going to be out your, on your, you're on my hair. So like, I always kind of knew that something like that was, I, I had potential for, but you know, when you're living, my life was not always easy. So when you're living in survival, right? When your, your root, your sacral, your solar plexus are just trying to stay alive, right? There's no time for heart, throat, third eye crown, like that, that, that takes a backseat. But I always understood it was in me, but I wasn't setting out to write a book. I wanted to leave my job, be a successful artist. I wanted to paint. That's all I wanted to do. And I, so I, when I was uh, 2021, I wrote this children's book because I'm so obsessed with the idea of the chakra system being addressed in a practical manner. It's easy to throw crystals at it. It's easy to throw yoga at it. It's easy to throw Reiki at it. I, yeah, you know, I don't want to be disparaging. Not that it's easy. It's common. That's what we do because it's yeah, yeah. energy. Mm -hmm. But we forget that the practicality of our lives, it's essential to look at it psychologically. Like when I work with people, I always compare it to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, your basic needs need to be met and you have the fear and the, the acceptance and all that stuff. So I wrote a little book called Veda Finds Your Crown. And it was really for me to work with the children, for me to work using the gallery. This is the one that I've recently revamped and um, and I've published through Phenom. Uh, you know, publishing, yeah. check it out. But uh, <laughs> it's about this girl, Veda, Veda, the old Vedic test, uh, text, yeah. the, the third eye chakra. She loses her crown and she goes on this quest. And it's kind of like Wizard of Oz, Oz like, and she Super picks up fun. her friends along the way, which is every misaligned chakra. And you get to know about this a little bit. And then it carries over to um, a workbook at the end where you could go through each chakra and ans answer the questions. Like, why would this be misaligned? What can I do to have a more stable sacral chakra? What does it look like? And really get people to look within. I wrote it for children. Mm -hmm. It's like middle school age, okay. but I I intentionally use, oh, I illustrate it because I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. So I illustrate it. So I take my educator hat and I take my uh, intuitive hat and I take my... um my artistic hat and I created this book. So that's where it started. And again, it was for fun, but it's really valuable. I teach workshops on finduniquelyyou.com based on this book to teach to kids and adults, to teach educators how to better educate the whole child through this concept. Love it. Cool, right? 
so cool. cool. And what a fun, creative way. Like I'm seeing that story as you're talking about it. Like how yeah. fun that is fun for adults too, because frankly, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest here. Some of that spiritual work can be so boring and reading about yeah. chakras can put me to sleep in no time. <laughs> you say chakra people are like, it, it. yeah, right. right. And I love that stuff. And one of my yeah. new favorite people is a chakra reader who was on our show. And I actually went to her and had mine read and like, it's very cool yeah. and it can be really boring. So yeah, it finds her crown sounds like a really fun, imaginative and interactive way, like to catch you to, you know, to catch your attention. And then I love that you turn it into a little workbook at the end. That is yeah. super, super. Yeah. Cool. So, so I'm sorry. Can no, I, it's can just be the other ones? Oh, uh, so the, so the other, so that one, you know, I teach workshop, I teach it to adults and kids. It's really, really cool. I'm actually right now in the process, I'm in the midst of a four week workshop and I'm just having the best time with it. And we do it through these characters. It's really, really cool. The other two books, um, they they go hand in hand. They're like real. Oh, let me just backtrack to the Veda for children for middle school. You could read it though to younger kids, and it's like when you go to a Disney movie, mm-hmm. you go for the kids, but really the adults are like, oh yeah, eighties tunes, all right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like that. Like you would read the Veda finds your crown and have the best time with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what's cool about that. It's versatile. The other two books, one is the Ten Recommandments for Personal Empowerment. And that one embodies the idea. It's like a a loose autobiography meets how to remember I was an educator for a whole bunch of years. And so I tell these stories, these anecdotes about what I call my dumpster fire of a life, what I gleaned from them, how I turned it around and then share the insights and then give you again, exercises and questioning and activities to walk you through the journey and the whole what I keep hitting home is this is your story. I'm not like this guru standing on the top of the hill saying, this is how it should be. I'm saying, I'm just sharing my story, what I did. And this is your story. So that's about the empowerment. I talk about how I left my job. I talk about what my childhood was like and all of that. Mm-hmm. The follow-up, which is just released. Oh my God. I thought it was like, I don't want to be gross, but I thought it was like 10 Rex's like turd, like the one that came after. <laughs> But it's actually proving to be better than 10 Rex. It's called Beyond the 10, what happens after, right? After you become empowered and decoding the woo-woo. I love it. Because in my path, I was so turned off by all of the terminology and all of the things I was running across because there's unfortunately people out there that want so badly to to, um, align with something. Mm -hmm but they haven't yet done the, like the empowerment work. So they're kind of missing the boat a little bit and spewing love and light and not realizing that you have to embody it. Yes. So the book is decoding the woo-woo. So it's my accidental spiritual journey. I decided I was going to leave my job. I was going to be this professional artist. We had to sell our house because we needed to be able to afford where we lived. We moved out into the woods. I had no idea I'm returning to nature. Sure, I'm returning to self. No <laughs> idea. But we moved out to the woods, right? And I painted. And then all of a sudden, I'm aligning, I'm meeting, right? All these yes. like minded, what I call unicorns. I had no idea that I was raising my vibration. You know what I mean? Yes. I don't know. Yes. And, and so I chronicled that journey and what that looked like. I even talk about the dissonance that I was finding with my husband mm-hmm. because he's like, you're not the woman I married. And I'm like, but how could I be? Right. And so there was a little bit of that and how he came around because a lot of people I know that are on this journey are worried about their loved ones falling behind, how I had to cut the ties with some people yes. and how that's okay too. Really, really good stuff. So I'm excited about all three of them. They all have that that overlap of it's just about our spiritual journey, yeah. but it all touches a different piece of who it needs to resonate with in that moment. I love that. And that, that title of that book was what piqued my interest about you. I was like, ah, I I just, this sounds so good because, you know, so many of us don't even know the language or like you were kind of talking about people think they can skip, (laughs) they can skip over the deep soul work and it is work. Uh, It's not pretty. (laughs) it's not it's not it's not it's 
ugly tears. It's, you know, on the floor. It's, it is, you know, I always joke, it's, it's the flu virus. <laughs> it's the purge when you have the, a stomach flu or a fever or food poisoning. It is like the emotional version of that. And sometimes the physical release too, of all this here we'll do the pg-13 word shit that we've collected and stored in our lifetime that to move up to ascend into our next spiritual level still on this earth we have to release and to to do that we have to go through it and feel it again because we didn't the first time around we ignored it and we stored it so it's like the universe whatever you call it, you know, on this show, we've started calling it the yada yada because of all the names wrapped into one, right? Right, yada, yada. right. Oh, uh, we, <laughs> we've been ignoring everything about our soul for so long that finally we get to this dark night of it where it's time to face up and feel it and release it and do some healing and make some space for that next level of your journey. Oh my God, I could not agree with you more. There is a line and, and it's become this infamous line in 10 Rex in the first book where I talk about how when we have less, because we're here to learn, grow and expand, feel the joy and the level of doing so, right? That's that's kind of my way of wrapping it up. And we, when there's a lesson to be learned, you know what I mean? We usually get like tickled with a feather and what do we do? We ignore it. Then we get tapped on the shoulder and then we get hit, you know, we get like shoulder bumped. We got a little, you know, a little punch to the arm and then we get punched in the privates. And the line is sometimes it takes a good old fashioned schwat punch <laughs> to really get your attention. And what happens? So everything is about like, I'll call my friend Angela and I'm like, you're ready for the schwat punch. She's like, I'm sitting <laughs> You know, so so it, it becomes like when we ignore, ignore. And that's why when we get older, that's why you see midlife crises. That's why you see people become caricatures of themselves when they ignore enough. Because it's like, bam, bam, bam. Why is my life so hard? Because, you know, 35 <laughs> punches ago, I'll stop saying that. I know it's <laughs> but about 35 of those ago, you know what I mean? You chose to ignore it. And it gets harder and faster and worse. And uh yeah, it's it's really tough. But when you when you start to learn the formula and the pattern of life in general mm -hmm. and of your own life, mm -hmm. you see them from a mile away, and it becomes more even entertaining sometimes. Like when I get the ick about something, I'm like, and I sit back, and and then it becomes like a game, like one big game of Sudoku. Like it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Uh, you can when you practice being aware you really can see it or you'll notice you know i'll notice my same responses and i'm like oh wait something's going on i need to i need to knock this off and look around <laughs> and look around and look yeah. around yeah yeah oh you are so cool i really like you oh thanks dana yeah. <laughs> <I like you laughs> too. <laughs> oh so fun it's so much fun to have these conversations on this show i'm just i'm so grateful for it because I get to talk to so many cool people that I'd never meet if I was just hanging out in, you know, my hometown here. Um, I meet a lot of cool people, but you know, where are you even? Where in where in the I'm uh... in Stewart, Florida. So if you're looking at Florida, I hate to bring this up, but the hurricane that just um demolished like the Naples area. Yeah. I'm directly across the state. Uh, okay. in Stewart. Um, there's a big like lake in the middle and then I'm on the other side. So just as you get out of South Florida, Palm Beach, you know, the whole, you know, where, where Trump resides and all that, I'm just north. It's lovely. It's a lovely little town right by the water. My my uh, gallery is right across the street from the river. It's, oh, cool. it's special. Where are you? I'm in Michigan. I'm in the Detroit area. So. Ooh, burr, 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 burr. Yeah, we're ha it's okay right now, though. I mean, it's this is going to be the first Halloween. And so people were recording this on Halloween, uh, even though it's getting close to Christmas for you guys. Um, it, uh, it's going to be the first Halloween that it doesn't snow since I've been back in the United States these last eight years. <laughs> or poor rain. So it rained overnight and I think we're going to have a dry, like 50 degree evening. It's amazing. God bless you. Now that my kids are so old, they don't 
well, my youngest still trick or treats, but <laughs> how old's your youngest? 13. I have a 13 and a 12. Okay. I'm yeah, a 16 yeah. and a 17 year old too. And they're like, they don't care. So they get enough candy from grandmas. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> Oh, this is so good. So you have, so tell me all the places. Here's my, my question. I love to ask people like, where do you like to show up on social media? So I can go to your website, which we're going to put in the notes and find uniquely you.com and do all the things. But if I just want like a, a little bit of Dana one day, where do I find you? Where do I find that little, a little bit of Dana? Max well, if you're, well, if you're, if you're low, come to the gallery um i i run by appointment only but please please the 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 website will be in the notes contact me i would love to have you it's such a quaint little place it's really really cool but to find me on social media i will be honest i used to be i used to have the gallery page i used to have my personal page you know the instagram and all that and i had a hacking incident about a year ago and not only was deleted, it was pretty bad. It was it was actually kind of gruesome, the, the incident. And um, I can't even get back on. So I've gotten back on different email and I have like 30 friends, you know. Yeah. But to, so there is it. It's hard to find me, but I do have a group page uh, under my name, Dana Sardano. Okay. And the group page um, is 10 Recommandments for Personal Empowerment. Okay. So that's a good place to find me all the time. And then on uh, Instagram, which I'm creating um more of a voice for myself there mm -hmm. um it's dana sardano scambaloni you don't have to figure out how to spell it. it's my husband's name it doesn't matter <laughs> but just know it's more than Dana. you'll pull up dana sardano and you'll see all those vowels and be like what the hell but that's me also <laughs> something very but, italian okay <laughs> oh my, yeah people are like why'd you keep your maiden name i'm like because i have to spell s-g-a-m to even begin my husband's last name and that's a headache so it's yeah sardano if you see scambaloni that's me too <laughs> that's an amazing name. <laughs> it is. It's you know. I remember when we first met. He was like, nobody could pronounce it, but because I'm Italian, I'm like, oh yeah, it's Scambaloni. He's like, how'd you do that? And I'm like, we're meant to be. Oh, it's in the cards. That's beautiful. <laughs> but can you speak more? We have a few more minutes. Okay. Fun and interesting. Um, can you speak more about the journey of your relationships? Uh, as you kind of raise that frequency, whether you knew what you were doing or not at the time. And because yes, people are afraid of this, right? Mm -hmm. This is one of the the pieces that I see resistance in is, oh, if I change though, if I become more spiritual or if I level up my frequency or if I, if I start creating a life that I love, which is my phrasing for my business. You know, if I start choosing in favor of what matters the most to me, then that means I'm going to leave people behind that I love, or they're not going to like me, or they're not going to accept me anymore. What do I do? I don't, you know, not everybody has to get divorced as your proof positive to level up their lives. I did, but that's because my guy, my ex was a static character, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, can you just tell, tell what you would tell clients or friends or the listeners of spirit cafe, like why not to be afraid of that? Okay. So there, there are two types of, of cutting of the, mm, there are two types of relationships in the growth. Okay. One of them involves the cutting of the ties. Sometimes it could just be simple. You just pull your energy back and they gently disappear and that's okay. Okay but our more intimate relationships, right? The relationships of our immediate family growing up, our mothers, our fathers, our siblings, right? Um, the, you know, our, our, our romantic partners. Um, though I speak of this in 10 Rex, like my mother went to her grave, we were estranged. Mm. I didn't love that, but I had to make some choices about my own boundaries and about my own personal growth. That's, that's the work. You know, people want to go, you know, dance the moonlight with a crystal, which is lovely. But the work is being able to go, you know what? It took a lot for me to get here and I'm not stepping into that hornet's nest because that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very difficult decision to make. So that there's those and to know that you are worthy of the work that you're doing yes. and that you're, whatever you're carrying, density, damage, dysfunction, dark, whatever you want to call it, 
comes from people, unfortunately, that came from people, unfortunately, that came from people. Like it's a cycle of abuse, neglect, whatever it is. And we could remove the judgment and we could remove ourselves. We could essentially save ourselves, for lack of a better word, empower ourselves and be okay with that because there is no obligation. It's self-imposed. That's the one part. Yeah. The other part that I think that you're leaning towards is now I'm I'm well, I'm happy, I'm whole, I'm on the spiritual journey, I'm discovering all this cool stuff. The magic is broadening, right? My awareness is, is expanding. And the person that you share your life with or, you know, people in your life don't get it. Mm-hmm. One of the mistakes that I think that we make, I say we, I include myself in this, is we want them whoever them are, we want them to experience what we're experiencing. So we sort of push and all you're getting is heels in the sand. So with my husband, there's a line in decoding the woo-woo where I talk about in 2018, I remember what I was wearing. I remember where I was sitting. And I said to him, I worry, I worry that I cannot continue this path. I cannot not continue this path. Like I I have to be true to who I am and what I'm doing. I have to, Mm -hmm. but if you don't, I never use the term wake up because I kind of found it a little condescending, you know, in that, in those terms. But if you don't start to allow me to be who I am without being in hiding and about being angry and fearful of it, I'm afraid of what's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. And his response is, you're not the woman I married. And we just kind of like, let it be, but we continued to have a healthy, respectful life. I just knew that it was, this was for me. Mm -hmm. And I found people who I was in alignment with and I just let him do his own thing. And as, again, this is all in woo-woo, in the woo-woo book, uh-huh. but as our relationship progressed and I left him alone, but I continued to be true to my own authenticity, yeah. he began to witness and let go of the fear and see that there was nothing to be scared of. And his vibration, if you want to use those terms, began to raise to mine. By me trying to pull him to my vibration, it was only a reflection of my fear of what would happen, which only brought me to his vibration. Yes. Right? Right? But if I let go and allow, oh my God, all the terms, right? If I... Am I like, oh my God, I have a whole painting that I dedicated to the idea of allowing, just allow. I'm like, I don't know how to allow. <laughs> I only know how to make things happen, right? What do you mean allow? <laughs> right? So, so when I let go of trying to make it my mission out of fear to get all my loved ones to come with me, some of them disappeared and some of them, I keep hitting my mic, and some of them rise to the challenge. And my husband, Oh my God, I never, I'm going to cry. I never would have guessed that he would have, I always knew he would rise because he's, he's my schmoopy. I got to be that, you know, but I never would have thought that he would have risen in the way that he has. He is so amazing. Again, if you read Woo Woo, yeah. the book is about decoding the Woo Woo, but there's this subplot of his growth through his experience with me, because I just focused on mine and not his. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm all chills. There's such value to just focusing, forgetting, just be who you are, stay in the zone, be who you are, stay in the zone. They will rise. They will rise. I promise you they will rise. And those who don't rise, it's unfortunate, but you win because you've Mm -hmm. risen. So, so good. That was the best answer ever. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and yeah, and honestly, people, when the people who don't rise with you fall away, it feels okay. And it feels it's okay. Safe, it's okay. Right? You're, yep. Yeah. And I have to say, like, there was a point in my, my relationship where I was like, but you have to, same, right? You have to wake up. And then now, as I decide again and again to, be committed in this relationship, even though he's not spiritual, it's like beautiful because he's my grounding. Rob is the only way, the only reason I walk out of the house with pants. Like seriously, <laughs> I've gotten to such a place of it's all good. Everything is cool. He's like, you're going to have pants on today. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. <laughs> he's my rock. 
He's my rock. You know, I dedicated the first book to him. He's my rock. He is the man. And now I see like things that I would say to him that he would push back. I hear these things come out of his mouth in his own way. And I'll t- at first, now I just let it go because now we're good. But I would just look at him and he would be like, yeah, dude, what's wrong with you? Catch up. And I'm just like, okay, I, love I will it. catch up. We call him Yoda. My friends and I call him Yoda because he'll say these profound things. And we're like, look at this guy. Look at this guy, man. Right? Yeah, he, yeah it's amazing. You, Everybody's like, oh, I want a Rob too. You can have a Rob. You just can never, ever push him because him, whatever you're him, you're her, mm-hmm. you're they, whoever it is that you are involved with, um, the 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 more you push, the more resistance you'll get. That's really it in a nutshell. It's so good. I think that's great parenting advice too, people. Just throwing that out there as a mom of three teens. You know, I my job, I've always believed is to plant the seeds and water and make sure there's enough sunlight and then let them grow. Because funnily enough, when I think they're not paying attention, wisdom spouts out of their mouths. Yeah. And I just sit back and go, ha ha. Flowers are blooming. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I just, yes. it's, and this is the, the journey of our lives, right? We just have to trust. We do our very best. We give all the love, the sunshine we can to ourselves too. And uh, first and foremost. Yeah. Right. Always. And, and then we get to watch the garden grow. Awesome. Yeah. And that, and, and to bring it all full circle, that's those buckets that I was talking about. I'm doing all of these things. And all of a sudden it came to me. I'm like, oh my God, you have created five buckets of, of creativity that now are all their own separate entities. And even though they overlap, they're all doing their own thing. And now the fruit is just taking on color. Like it's not quite right. In all of them, some of them, you know, different seasons, some of them more so than others. But I'm now like, oh, that's what it's all been for. All the personal work, all the exterior work. It's really cool. And like you said, with the teenagers, mine are 12 and 13. And I hear certain things or I see certain things. And I'm like, I did that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Oh, so good. So much wisdom. And you're just like, you're so fun to be around. Oh, you as well. Thank you. So Okay, so audience can find you at finduniquelyu, the letter U, dot com. And of course, that's in the notes. So look around, folks. This is, I think, the message of this time together is to look around, pay attention, and you will find where you're going if you want to hang out with Dana a little bit more. And man, if I get to Florida sometime, I'm sure I'll get to Florida sometime. I am coming to see you and hang out in your gallery. I can't wait. Um, Any parting wisdom, Dana? Or just tell people again that it's Phenom Publishing and they should get all your books. And <laughs> I do think that it behooves anybody who is on um, the journey. We're all doing different things. We're all in different places. But as I tell my clients, I'm like, you're not special. Like we all mm-hmm. are going through it. It just looks different for each of us. Absolutely. I think it behooves anybody that, you know, I say, yeah, come to the gallery page and check out the books and all those things. But really check out finduniquelyyou.com. Um, there's something so special. On the, on the homepage, there is what we call a spark meter. And you can go and you can take a little quiz and get a sense of like where you reside. Not I, We don't call it spiritually, but it's like a joy meter. Like how much do you enjoy your life? How much do you live, you know, for, you know in authenticity? We have seven schools of thought where our workshops reside. And, you know, just to give you an idea, one's called the school of thrivelihood. Right. Love the other it. one's called the school of pharmacy with an F okay. um, school of empowerment, obviously school of creative expression, school of metaphysics. It takes a village school, which is, nice. you know, about the children. And then there's the kitchen sink school. Everything else falls in there. Right. And <laughs> what you'll do is you'll go and you'll take this little quiz and you'll get a sense. And, and then it will offer you, hey, maybe you want to take a workshop. And the workshops are not so you could become a CPA or so you could become, you know, a life coach or any of these things. It's so you could really just do something to enrich your life and to build a community and meet like minded people. And we have you instructors who have been trained to teach their passions on this platform. My background curriculum and instruction sure. comes from me. And, um, but then you could be a person that is still looking, peeking behind the curtain because you're still in the midst or coming out of your dark night. 
and now you have a support system. So it really hits people. It's, it would really behoove you to take a look, especially because yeah. of what you do for a living and the people that you encounter. It's um, it's the wave. It's the wave of what we're trying to do with the world around us. So, I love it. That's so yeah. beautiful. Spark meter. That's so fun too. We all, we all love a good quiz, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like doing those social media quizzes. This will not um, take your information and hack your account. This was actually for the greater good. <laughs> nice. Very good. Oh, beautiful, Dana. So we're going to send people your way. If you guys, if you take that quiz, then come back and comment. What what did you get? What were your results? And what yeah. did you think of this conversation? And what sparks did you get from all the wisdom that was shared in here? Or just the joy right? There is such wisdom in joy itself. So mm. tell us what you think and go check out Dana at finduniquelyyou.com. And oh, thank you so much, Dana, for this time of yours and for being here and for showing up and for sharing the many beautiful messages that you have with all your buckets. I love it. Oh my God, my buckets. Thank <laughs> you for having me. You're amazing. I was so excited to meet you and then we went so fast. Thank I you. know. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. See you next week, Spirit Cafeers. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on Spirit Cafe. Please leave all comments on our Spirit Cafe Facebook page or in the comments below our YouTube videos.